Hello everybody. As we have done some basic experiments, Krichops current law, Krichops voltage law, those videos are already uploaded on the channel. Today we are going to perform yet another experiment. That's we are going to verify the superposition theorem on DC circuits, uh, which actually states that if we have a multi-source circuit and we want to calculate current or voltage across any circuit, circuit element or a current through any branch, so in that multi-source circuit, the superposition form states that you can take one source at a time and replacing other source by their internal impedances. Uh, for example, if we have a multi-source circuit in which we have a two voltage source, we can take one voltage source at a time and replacing other voltage source by its internal uh, impedance. That means as you are aware that the internal impedance of the uh, voltage source is uh, very small that means we have to replace that voltage source by a short circuit and taking only that single voltage source at a time. Then after that we have to replace that another voltage source and uh, making that source is active which was initially replaced by short circuit. Similarly if we have a circuit which in which we are having a voltage source or a current source we can replace the current source by its internal own impedance that means uh, as you are aware that the internal impedance of the current source is uh, very high that means at that time it will be replaced by an open circuit and keeping voltage source active. Then after that, the signal procedure will be that we will be replacing voltage source by a short circuit and taking current source in active mode. So, so let's demonstrate the same theorem. For that, we have chosen a very simple circuit. You can see that circuit. It's a two-source circuit in which we have a two voltage sources, no current source. We have a two voltage sources, 10 volt source and 5 volt sources, and we have three resistances. This is an R1, R2, and R3. Right? What we will do? We will measure these currents. We will take the case for the currents. We will take the case for the current I1, I2 and I3. So, uh, what we have to do? First, we have to take only source VDC1, which full magnitude is 10 volt, and replacing this 5 volt DC source by its internal impedance. That means we have to replace this uh, voltage source by a short circuit. At that time, we have to calculate current I1, I2 and I3 and note down the magnitude. After that, what we will do? We will replace this voltage source by its internal impedance. So the circuit will become like this. You can see the voltage source which initially which was here is replaced by a short circuit. Right? So only this 10 volt source is active. Uh, the resistances are as such. Right? The magnitude of this resistance is 1000 K. This is 673 ohms and this is 673 ohms. And we will again measure these currents. Now the currents will be replaced by I1 dash, I2 dash and I3 dash. We will measure their magnitudes with respect to this source and this they are replaced by short circuit. After that, the other thing that we will activate now this voltage source, we will activate this source and replace this source by a short circuit. That is just impeding internal impedance, right? The so circuit third will become like this. You can see the 5 volt source is active right now and the 10 volt is replaced by a short circuit and the resistances are as such, 1000 K, 673, 673. We will again measure the currents. I1 double dash, I3 double dash, I2 double dash. So after doing the whole analysis, we have to verify what superposition actually states. This current I1 is must be the algebraic sum of I1 dash and I1 double dash. Similarly, this current I2 initially, which was present when both the sources was active, should be the algebraic sum of I2 dash and I2 double dash, I2 double dash. Similarly, the current I3 should be equal to the algebraic sum of I3 dash and I3 double dash. So as my colleague has explained about the superposition theorem, so now let us practically design this circuit on this breadboard. As you can see, we have two independent voltage sources, 10 volts and 5 volts. These are both DC sources. Then we have three resistors, R1, R2 and R3 and three ammeters which are connected in series. Now you have to keep your eyes on this circuit diagram and also on this breadboard. So same schematic diagram I will design on this breadboard. First of all, you can see what components we require in this uh, circuit as we are going to this superposition theorem on this breadboard. We require two uh, DC sources, 10 volt and 5 volt. You can see practically we have a DC source here in which we have multiple sources. So I will set A and B uh, and I can vary it from 0 to 30 volts. So these are the two supplies. They are independent to each other. Then we have three emitters, emitter connected with I2, I3 and I1. So I have three emitters here. Then I have three resistors, R1, R2 and I3. You can see I have three resistors here. So let us now design this circuit on this breadboard. You have to keep your eyes on the schematic diagram. First of all, I will bring the DC source, 10 volt source I will connect. You can see the positive of the source, I will connect it somewhere here. So this positive, I have connected on the breadboard. Then you can see a wire between emitter, emitter positive and voltage source positive. I have brought voltage source here. So I will connect now the wire between the voltage source and between the emitter positive. 
So this is emitter. I will connect the emitter positive with voltage source it's positive. It is vertically shorted. You can see the previous video. I have shown how you have to connect to that board. Then you can see the emitter negative is connected with the resistor. So I will bring a 1K resistor. I have three resistors. Its value is 1K. It is 780 ohm. This is 780 ohm. So 1K resistor I will connect somewhere here on the breadboard. Say I will I will connect it here. Its resistance is 1K. So you can see its one terminal is connected with the emitter negative. So I will bring emitter negative and I will connect it with the one end of the resistor. So up till here the circuit is complete. Then you can see the another terminal of the resistor R1 is connected with the uh, positive terminal of the emitter but that emitter is connected with the R2 so I will bring another emitter it is positive is connected with the R1 so this is the positive of the emitter say emitter A2 so I will connect the positive of the emitter with the R1 another terminal of the R1 so another terminal of the emitter that is connected with the resistor R2 so I will first connect now R2 and R3 somewhere on the breadboard you can see I have two resistors here, R2 and R3. I will connect it on the breadboard somewhere. You can see, say this is R2. I will connect it here. Then you can see R3 is here. You know uh, the terminal of R2, R3, they are grounded. So I will connect one terminal of R2 and R3 somewhere because they should be at the same potential. So I have connected R2 and R3. We had reached it here. Now you can see the emitters negative is connected to one terminal of R2. So I will connect a negative of uh, emitter with R2, one terminal of R2. Then you can see another emitter that is connected with R3. Its positive is connected with the positive of another emitter. So I will bring emitter, another emitter. Its positive is connected to emitter 2. It's positive. You can see emitter 2 is positive is going here. So I will connect it here. So this point and this point is same. Then you can see its emitter negative is going to the uh, another terminal that is R3. So its negative that is here is connected to the terminal of R3. So that is here. Then you can see emitter negative that I have already connected to the ground. You can see. Then we have a voltage source, another voltage source that is 5 volts. So I will connect this positive here. They are at the same potential. This, this and this. So I will connect the positive. You can see the positive. You can see the positive is here. That is 5 volt positive. I will connect it here, somewhere here. This one point, this point and this point is the same. So I will connect it here on the breadboard. Then the negative of this voltage source will go to the ground. So ground is connected here. Also negative of this source, negative of this source will go to the ground. So ground is common, so that is also connected here. So this way the circuit is complete. Now I will switch on the DC supply. This is the multi-source DC supply. Both supplies are in this. I have set one VDC1 that is equal to 15 volts. So VDC1 is 15 volts. And another VDC2, I have set 5 volts. So that is 5 volts. So now we will measure current I1 here by this emitter, say emitter 1, and current I2 and I3 by these emitters. So current I1, you can see the current I1 is 4 milliamps. So we will note down on this page how much is the current I1. So I1 is 4 milliamps. I2 and I3 are 14 milliamps each. You can see 14 milliamps each. As both uh, these resistors are connected parallelly and they are equal, so that is why the current is same. That is 14 milliamps. You can notice it. So now what we are going to do, we are going to replace this voltage source by its internal impedance. So I will re remove this voltage source, that is 5 volt source. I will remove this where I have given the connections. I will remove this. It's negative. What I will do now, I will replace this voltage source by its internal impedance. That is by a wire. What I have done, I have connected this wire here and I will connect it another terminal with the emitter. So I will connect it here. So you can you can check here. These two should become zero because uh, th uh, they are connected parallelly, so entire current should flow through here. So this will be zero, this will be zero, so there will be some current from through this emitter. Look, these two have become zero and there is some current here at the I1. Now we will note down the ratings on this page as I have given now the 15 volt source and I have replaced the source second that is 5 volts by its internal impedance. So as you can see, I have replaced the source second by its internal impedance.
and the entire current will flow across this conductor so current across these will be zero practically you can see on the meter the current is zero and here the current is 14 milliampers so we will note down the current on this page as you can see this is 14 milliampere this is i2 is zero i3 dash is zero now we will remove this 15 volt voltage source and give back 5 volt voltage source the circuit will be like this as we have replaced this by its internal impedance and given back the 5 volt so first of all what we will do we will remove, remove this voltage source so i will remove this voltage source it's negative as well i will give back this voltage source that is 5 volts i will give it connected again so it's positive you can see it's positive is connected here and negative is connected ground that is at the same potential now these are the results you can see the currents obtained when the 5 volt source is active and the 15 volt source is uh, replaced by a short circuit and the current you can see the current i1 is 9 milliamps and this current i2 and i3 uh, they are equal in magnitude and they, they are, their magnitude is 14 milliamps right so summarizing the overall results you can see see first when my when my both the sources were active the current was the current i1 was 4 milliamps 4 milliamps right after that when we replaced this source by a short circuit then the current i1 dash was 14 milliamps then then after that when i keep this source as act, this source is active and replace this by short this by a short circuit the current i1 double dash was 9 milliamps so previously in for when this source was active the direction of this current was in this direction and when this source was active the direction gets reversed so the overall current you can see is the algebraic sum that's the 14 minus 9 milliamps which actually refills the current i1 approximately equal to 5 milliamps or 4 milliamps right which is the statement of superposition form so for this current you can see the algebraic sum of these two currents is equal to this current i1 which was initially when both sources were active similarly for this current i2 when both the sources were active this current i2 was 14 milliamps so when this source was active and this was replaced by a short circuit and that time i2 was zero uh, after that when we replaced this by a short circuit and this source was active at that time the current i2 was zero so summarizing that the overall current since the direction of current in this case does not change uh, it is both the downwards in both the cases overall current i2 uh, must be the algebraic sum that's i2 dash plus i2 double dash that's 14 plus zero equal 14 milliampere equal 14 milliamps so uh, giving this results as well similarly for this current i3 when this source was active and this was replaced by a short circuit that current i3 dash was zero right after that when we kept this source active and this was replaced by a short circuit at that time the i3 double dash was 14 milliamps initially when both the sources were active that current was also 14 milliamps so since in this uh, case the direction of current also does not change it's that the downward direction in both the cases and this source was active and this source was active so the overall current i3 dash is equal 14 plus 0 equal 14 milliamp put i3 dash now i will show you one more interesting thing now i have uh, reconnected the circuit uh, <coughs> once again where both the sources are active you can see the voltage source uh, v1 is at 13.8 volts and voltage source v is at 5.4 volts and, and you can see the direction of currents i1 is reading in the positive direction i2 is in the downward direction i is also reading in the positive direction i3 is also reading in the positive direction now what i will do if by some i am able to raise the potential of this point with respect to this point that means the direction of current at that time should reverse that means the direction of ammeter reflected by the ammeter current reflected by the ammeter should get reversed so i will show you the same thing so what i will do i will change the value of this voltage v by which of which you can see the direction of this ammeter will get reversed at particular voltage where its potential will get raised you can see you can see you can see you can see the direction of current is you can see the direction of current is can see, right okay so this was all about how we can uh, verify this proposition theorem on a basic simple circuit thank you